Welcome to Wait to Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Many Chaldeans, or Assyrians in Iraq, are Christians, putting them at odds with the Muslim majority and Sharia law. That's the reason for a mass exodus to America and other locations. It's an act of desperation that sometimes oversteps immigration policy. Recently, U.S. officers rounded up members of the Chaldean community in Detroit and elsewhere. No one saw this coming. On the line with us today is Mona Oshana, a broadcast activist for Syrian Christians and host of the Mona K Show on KXEG 1280 AM in Phoenix. Mona, you understand leaving everything behind to escape religious persecution. Could you give us a quick summary of why you left Iraq? As a Christian, uh, along with my family, we escaped in 1977 because of the brutal dictatorship of Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was constricting the country to take full control and basically take the whole population of Iraq hostage. Well, let me ask you this. What was your initial reaction when you heard about the recent mass arrests in Detroit? I truly was shocked, as most of our community was. I am a part of the Assyrian community, but Christians are known under uh, Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Syriac. Very traumatizing. This is a fear that our community, uh, our Assyrian, Chaldean, Syriac community are too familiar with. But here's the irony, uh, Steve. It was a fear back home in Iraq. It was a fear anticipated at the hands of a brutal government and terrorist groups, as we are hearing right now, as ISIS. We have no idea that we would expect such fear or anticipate this type of an attack. Here we are facing another type of uh, persecution. And and many of the uh, refugees had been here a, a couple decades, right? Yes. That uh, most need to understand is that these individuals that were arrested came to this country legally. A lot of people are equating illegal immigration with legal immigration, and I think we need to clarify that. Okay. Before they became citizens, they committed a nonviolent crime. Under the law, if convicted, they are sentenced to a time in prison, and their legal status, most know it as a green card, is taken away or revoked. And an order of deportation is issued. That's where the, most of these people were. The argument here is that these individuals who have committed these crimes did so decades ago. They served their time, and most importantly, and this is where the argument of all of the legal counsel is making, if these individuals are deported as Christians, they will face the same persecution of the Christians being beheaded, raped, and sold into slavery today. This is why this case of deportation is not as simple as your typical immigrants committing crimes. These are immigrants that cannot, under any circumstances, be returned to their birth country. And by the way, Steve, they have all been rehabilitated and present no risk to society, meaning they have not committed any other crime. Now, the other day on your radio program, you interviewed a a couple of lawyers, one of which is connected with a class action lawsuit. And I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the legal argument. Aren't there some U.S. laws or treaties or uh, something like that that does prevent people who are objects of persecution from uh, being returned to their home country? Absolutely. Here's the thing. Everyone must understand in these cases we must not only apply, and I understand that America is a, is a country of law, but we must also understand that we must apply international laws as well. There are human rights international laws that are involved here that many don't seem to be thinking about. The international law of genocide must be considered. Therefore, it is not only the national law to be considered, Steve, but also international law of protecting those who are being persecuted and oppressed. These individuals that were arrested fall under this category. And here's another side of the issue. The United States has accepted an unbelievable number of Muslim refugees, as have many countries in Europe, but not so much in the Middle East. Why this crackdown on Christian refugees? And why now? It sounds suspicious to me. Yeah, and that was one of the questions.
questions I pose to uh, the immigration attorney and basically to the advocates out there. I do want to mention that it wasn't just Christians that were arrested, Steve. There were some Muslims to include Arabs and Kurds that were arrested. Now, I want to also mention that it happened on a Sunday. And here you have the U.S. government coming to churches. One man was walking into his daughter's confirmation in church and was arrested. Well. Well, now, as far as accepting so many Muslims as opposed to the Christians, you know, that is the million-dollar question that everyone needs to, to ask. Yeah, and I, I guess probably in upcoming weeks or months, the, the truth will finally come out and we will understand, but it, it's kind of puzzling right now. I seem to think that it's politically motivated, but, you know, that's, that's a subject all on its own. We don't want to fall between the cracks once again. The Iraqi government, as uh, and I want to quote uh, uh, the immigration attorney, Christina Abraham, who said, we basically have been sold out. The Iraqi government sold this out again. The Iraqi government is issuing travel documents right now, and that is part of the deal that they made with President Obama, which for the last 30 or 40 years had not, had not been accepting, had not been issuing the, the travel documents for people that have been convicted, or these people in, in particular, to go back. Why now? And what can average people like us do about all this? Who should we contact? On my program last Sunday, I encouraged everyone to call their congressional leaders. There is a comment line at the White House, of course, and of course you can leave comments to any of your uh, congressional leaders, senators, for that matter. Call them and say, I understand that this is an immigration law, but I think there is an injustice being done here by the U.S. government, and if it's politically motivated, please keep these people out of your politics because they have suffered enough. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Mona? I think they should not be sent back. These, these individuals should not be sent back because as much as America is a country of law, but it is also a country of compassion and humanitarianism. It would go against all America promotes in the world and stands against if it takes these tired and weary people only to send them back to the hell they escaped from. There must be a special circumstance or criteria that the legal system must account for this special case. So I hope to God and pray that America will see beyond just their legal immigration law. And if I could, Steve, just one more thing that I shared on my Facebook. I just want to say about these people, about these Christians, they will not stop fighting. And I wrote this there, and I just want to end with this. The silenced are speaking up. The defenseless are standing up. The persecuted didn't fold up. The abandoned didn't let up. And the survivors will not give up. We will not give up. Well, Mona, you've you've really opened our eyes about a lot of things, things that um, we might not have known otherwise. I've enjoyed talking with you and, and hearing your perspective. Thanks for being our guest this time. Thank you, Steve, for all that you're doing, and thank you for shedding light on the subject. Mona Oshana is the host of the Mona K Show on KXEG 1280 AM, The Trumpet. It's on from 4 to 5 p.m. Thursdays, Arizona time. If you live outside the Phoenix area, you can listen online at 1280trumpet.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 